just without me no need your feel bitter your loving care now I am your child I am adopted in your family I could never be Father God your dead beside me Sing your praises out Sing your praises out Sing your praises forevermore Sing your praises out Sing your praises out Sing your praises forevermore Father God, I wonder how Loving care. Now I am the child I lived in your family. Never be alone. Father God, you're there beside me. I will sing your praises. I will sing your praises. I will sing your praises forevermore. Praises forevermore, forevermore, forevermore. All right. So God being our father and we are his children. So as good children, we should be obedient to what the father says. Many times we listen to God's word, but we refuse to obey it. Actually, when we say that we, we love the Father, we have to prove it by our obedience. So as we go closer to God's word, and as we understand what God is saying to us, we have to obey what the Lord tells us. Okay. So this song actually reminds us that... Uh, where is that? Hello? Yeah. <coughs> So God is our Father, and we belong to Him and Him alone. And our hearts should not grow cold to Him. Growing cold means when we don't obey God, that means our hearts are becoming cold. Our hearts should be on fire for the Lord. It should be passionate for the Lord. And as how do we know that we are passionate? Only through our obedience. Only through our obedience. <laughs> That be our prayer this evening.
that God would keep our hearts from growing cold. Let us not be people, children of disobedience, but let us be people who are obeying God's word so that our hearts may be on fire. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that the word of God rekindles the fire in our hearts. It sets our life ablaze. It sets our hearts on fire for you. Help us, teach us to understand the word of God so that we may obey it. And when we obey it, we would be on fire for the Lord. We would never be cold, O oh Lord, in our spirits, in our hearts. Teach us to obey God's word and to be on fire all the days of our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. We are in Mark chapter, I think it is, sorry, one second, Mark chapter 13. We are in Mark chapter 13. And I'm going to read from verses uh, 1 to 13. Okay, Mark chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. And as he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils. And you will be beaten in synagogues and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. All right. So it's a very, very dark passage. No. So uh, Jesus is actually prophesying all these things. Okay. Prophecy. Prophecy is actually not just saying about the future. Prophecy is also speaking the heart of God. What does God have in his mind? What is the plan that God has? No. So prophecy is both these things. Fourth telling, that means sometimes it tells you what is in the future. But sometimes prophecy is just letting you know what is there in the heart of God. What does God want you to know? Okay. So both these things can be prophecy. So here Jesus is going to tell you more about the future plans that God has for us. But it all starts with the temple. Last week we saw that Jesus was sitting inside the temple near the offering and uh, the offering box. And he saw that different people are putting offertory into the box. And there's a widow who was putting and she, Jesus said, that lady has put in more. Why? Because um, you know, uh, from her poverty, she put from her lack of money, she put that. So she, Jesus was actually commending the widow for putting the most compared to all the other guys put together, all the rich people's donations, all the you know uh, uh, amount of money, large sums of money that people put in. Jesus said she has given more than all of them added together okay? because of her heart, because of the way that she gave you know, joyfully. Everything that she had, she just put it into the offering box. So Jesus commended her. So as Jesus was at the temple, this continues, this teaching continues from there. So he says, as he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, see, so what were the disciples admiring? What were they looking at? What were they you know, appreciating there? They were appreciating the, the structure of the temple. You know, this was the synagogue in uh, Jerusalem, the main temple. And it was a huge structure and it was one of the wonders of the ancient world. Okay? It was a huge, huge structure. Now, uh, it was actually built by this king called King Herod. You know, you know King Herod is a wicked man, no? but he, did, uh, he wanted to please the Jews. 
So what he did was he built a magnificent structure. He, already the temple was there. Temple was actually built long, long back during the time of Ezra. You know, in the Old Testament, there is a book called Ezra. Have you seen that? Ezra and Nehemiah. There are two books. Okay. Now, during the time of Ezra, people were in exile. They were actually in a foreign land. And from Babylon, that foreign land, people came back to Israel. So when they got back to Israel, one of the first things that they built was the temple. So during Ezra's time, there were these two people, Ezra and another man called Zerubbabel. Okay? A very hard name, but uh, you know, note it down. Zerubbabel and Ezra together built the temple with all the help of the people around with them. You know? They were the ones who supervised in building the temple in Jerusalem. The temple was completely destroyed. The original temple was built by King Solomon. And that was destroyed. It was now in ruins. So Zerubbabel and Ezra built the new temple. It was a good temple, but not as great as the first one. But this temple was there for many, many years. Almost a thousand years, this temple was there. Okay, The one that Ezra built, the one that Ezra and Zerubbabel built, it was there almost for a thousand years. It was a main structure in Jerusalem. People really loved that temple. People really worshipped in that temple. It was a glorious temple. It was not as great as the, the architecture. The structure was not as good as the first one which Solomon built. But it was still there and it was, a, it was their temple. So uh, they liked it. you know. So Herod wanted to please these Jews. So what he did was, you know, uh, he rebuilt the temple. He started the rebuilding before Jesus was born. 19 years before Jesus was born, Herod started building the temple. And he ended building the temple 63 years you know, after Jesus' birth. Okay, so you should imagine, almost 80 years, 80, 80 years it took him to build the temple, to remodify the temple. But during Jesus' time, when Jesus was walking there, the temple was almost finished. It was almost like 70% finished. And still the temple was really beautiful. A okay? lot of work had to be done in the outskirts, in the outside part of the temple. But the inside part of the temple was already finished. And it was a magnificent structure. Now, what did Herod do? Herod actually, you know, uh, where all he could put gold sheets on the roofs, he put that. So big, big plates of gold were put on top of the roof. Okay. So when the sun rose up and the rays of the sun hit the roof of the temple, that was like beautiful, you know, glorious light would be shining. It would reflect off the gold plates and it would be shining. The temple would be shining. And every Jew was very proud of that. And people came from far away to just see the sun rising, you know, on the temple. It was magnificent. If you, you can't look at the temple, it is so bright, you know, you have to close your eyes, you know. It is so bright on that. So, so, so shining. So that's how the outside of the temple was. Okay. The roof was overlaid with golden sheets. Now, what about the walls of the temple? Herod, you know, remodified the walls by putting in white marble. The marble was so white. So pure that if you look from far away, you would think that the temple is covered in snow. Okay, so shining light on top and snow all over the walls. Okay, that's how the temple looked. So it was a unique, unique sight. And uh, this temple, you know, uh, it had another thing also which was very great. Um, uh, this temple, uh, even the walls around the temple, okay, the walls around the temple. Was, used, was built by huge, huge marble stones. Now, you have to remember that those days, there were no cranes. You know? There were no mechanical cranes to carry these stones. And this temple is on top of a mountain, okay, on top of a hill. So how did they carry these stones? And from where did they bring these stones? Without the help of cranes and trucks and all that, how did they carry the stones? That's still a mystery for all the you know, architects and engineers today. They say, like, how did they build this temple? From where did they bring the stones? And how did they transport all these things on top of the hill? Nobody knows. But huge, huge stones were used. Uh, I mean, we know it from the uh, boundary. Only the boundary walls, some places are still left. All the other things have been destroyed. So from the boundary walls itself, we can see that huge, huge stones were put. Now, imagine that these stones were kept in such a way that, uh, you know, you could not actually put cement and all. In between the stones, you know, you put cement to stick them together. There is no stickiness. Okay, 
everything is just kept there but it's perfectly kept in such a way that you know the stones won't even move okay so that is a wonder of architecture and we don't know how they did it how did it was made possible but it is so well done that stones stand against each other without even having cement in between okay so this is how unique the temple was right i'm just giving you some of the you know great things about the temple and that's why you know every jew was so proud of the temple like they wanted everybody to come and see it and say wow you guys are the best temple ever you know and they were so proud of it they were so proud of it that you know they uh, they would actually you know when when you uh, when somebody makes some joke against the temple or remarks against the temple they would consider that as blasphemy blasphemy is like you know you say something wrong against god but here they say the temple is so precious to us the temple is like god for us you, know? you can't insult the temple you know if you insult the temple we get all angry and we will punish you we will throw stones at you and we will kill you if you say anything bad about our temple so that's how these jews were so uh, what do you call it so fascinated by the temple that they did not like anybody even saying bad things about it. so when jesus said tear down this temple and i will build it in 3 days they got angry but jesus was actually talking about his body he said tear down this temple and i will rebuild it in 3 days which he did actually he rose up on the third day and he showed them you know the temple of his body he brought it back to life but jews actually used it you know as one of their accusations against him when he was being crucified they said this man actually said that he will destroy the temple and rebuild it in 3 days see herod took so many years 80 years to build the temple how can this man build it in 3 three, 3 three days you know so they thought that was blasphemy that was insulting the temple actually jesus never meant that temple jesus meant his body which is the temple okay so that is one of the accusations that was raised against jesus now now this is the magnet and they were admiring this temple and then jesus also should have looked and said wow yeah guys i like this temple a huh? beautiful temple but no what did jesus say jesus said to him do you see these great buildings there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down hey jesus just spoiled their party jesus that just said something very negative and he said one stone will not remain on the other everything is going to be destroyed and for the jews it will be like oh my seriously that's going to happen how can that be happening this this temple has stood for 1000 years nobody has been able to do anything to it so how can you say that it's going to be destroyed now actually after jesus said this 40 years later this whole temple was destroyed 40 years after jesus's time the jews they started fighting against the romans they started rebelling against the romans and the romans got so angry with the jews they got so angry with the jews caesar gave the command he said destroy them kill them all so the army just rushed into jerusalem and they captured the whole of jerusalem and they started killing everybody everybody in the city was being killed and the people wanted to escape and the whole army was surrounding the city and everybody who ran out of the city they would be killing it you know so this was happening and people for for safety they all ran into the temple into this huge temple and they closed the giant doors they got got inside locked the doors so the army was waiting outside you know these huge stones they could not co- cover the huge stones they could not get inside so the army was waiting outside and the, all the jews were waiting inside the temple but you know they didn't have enough food and water so the outside fellows you know they knew one day these guys will have to open the door when we will destroy them so caesar sent messengers and saying guys is the job finished have they surrendered He said no sir they are all inside the temple and we are not able to go in so there was pressure on the commander He said come on finish the job fast kill them all just get it over with so immediately what the uh, what the uh, commander did was you know he ordered all the trees that are around that place to be cut down and all the wood from the trees to be put around the temple he said everywhere you know just put the wood and we will threaten them that we are going to set it on fire and then these guys will be scared that you know they will all be you know like become like a shawarma or shawai you know inside there they will get fried up inside so all the people will open the doors and they will come out so the 
the commander made you know a threat like that he said guys if you don't open the door by this evening i am going to set the whole temple on fire it was only a threat he wanted to just arrest them all after they came out but what happened was one of the soldiers he got drunk and he thought he was supposed to light the fire so he went and lighted the wood and the wood caught fire and the whole temple kept burning for hours hours and hours and everybody inside they could not even open the doors they all got killed inside everybody was roasted okay now another thing that happened was because of the intense heat i told you the roof was made of golden slabs the gold melted because of the high temperature and the and the liquid gold it it flowed down the walls and it got inside the gaps between the stones okay each of this uh, metal thing no golden thing it melted and it got uh, liquidified and the liquid actually you know flowed uh, flowed into the gaps between the stones so once everything was cleared the romans started looting the place they started stealing everything that they got but they did, they wanted the gold but the gold is already inside the gaps between the stones so what they did was they removed every stone and took out the gold okay now remember what did jesus prophesy he said one stone won't remain on on top of another exactly that happened each of the stones they removed it so that they could get the gold from in between the gaps see so exactly as jesus said jerusalem was leveled there was no no building in jerusalem everything was destroyed the temple was completely burned down even the stones were burned down and it was removed stone by stone was removed and the gold was looted by the romans okay so this happened in ad 70 so everything that jerusalem was proud about was destroyed see so the temple over the years had become like an idol like a god for the jews you know the temple is not god god dwells you know uh, in their temple it was god's place of worship but they were worshiping the temple as their god so god has this habit of destroying our temples man made temples you see so god does not like idols man made idols god doesn't like he hates idols and if temple has become an idol for you that is preventing you from coming towards god so god says i will destroy your idols and one of these idols was the temple and this temple was destroyed see god is saying that he is greater than any temple jesus is greater than any temple so we should actually worship the lord alone and not worship the building see so the building was lost to them everything that jesus said was done to that building the romans destroyed the whole temple and not a single stone was left remaining on another stone okay so it shows that everything was you know accomplished according to what jesus had exactly said now if this one prophecy about jesus has come true then the rest of the chapter is full of prophecies about what is going to come what is going to happen and every one of that is going to come true every one of them is going to come true and the first thing you know he says is you know as he sat on the mount of olives opposite to the temple okay now jesus was sitting there opposite to the temple now there is a huge mountain on which the temple is then there is a valley and then on the other side there is another mountain okay this is how it is so this second mountain is called the mount of olives the garden of gethsemane is on the mount of olives that is where jesus goes to pray so jesus has this habit of going up that mountain and praying every time you know when he whenever he is there in jerusalem he has the habit of going to the mount of olives and in that garden of gethsemane he goes there and quietly spend some time speaking to his father that is his time of prayer so from there from the mount of olives when you look opposite to that uh, mountain is the temple on uh, uh, on the other mountain see so he, it is a very beautiful sight to see from the mount of olives you can see the whole temple area and in between there is a valley this valley is called the kidron valley kidron k i d r o n kidron valley okay now every time there is the passover the sacrifices happening inside the temple the water for cleaning the sacrifices water for cleaning the blood of these animals is actually poured you know on the uh, you know on the in the inside the temple 
and the temple will wash away all the blood of the animals into this valley called the kidron valley and during the passover inside this valley the water will be running red okay water will be running red because of all the blood of the animals so that is when we understand okay passover is here why because the water will suddenly become red in color it's the blood of all the animals see and that was actually one of the passovers jesus was also crucified as our passover lamb okay so he had to cross the kidron valley and reach jerusalem he had to reach the temple that is where he was arrested that is where he was sentenced to death so that was, jesus was the sacrificial lamb for that so kidron is the valley between mount of olives and this side the temple mount okay so from kidron valley you cross and you climb up the mount of olives you can see a beautiful picture or the beautiful landscape of the mountain of where the temple is right so jesus looked at that temple and he was just sitting down there and peter james and john and andrew they were very curious they said wow it's the best time to ask them so these four disciples came to jesus peter james john and andrew peter and andrew are brothers james and john are brothers so these two groups of brothers they were very curious they came privately to jesus the rest of the disciples we don't know where they are but these four guys came to jesus and they said jesus just tell us when is this going to happen when is this temple going to be destroyed what are the signs that come before that see so jesus is going to give them some signs he said these are the signs that are going to tell you when this is going to happen see so now what they were looking at is see the temple destroyed it's like history earlier when the temple was destroyed all the jews were punished and they would go to babylon as exiles so if this temple is going to be destroyed that means history is going to repeat again that means we are going to be punished again we are going to leave jerusalem we are going to go into exile Jesus said, "No, no, no, no. This is not exile and all. Okay, this is going to be judgment. See, that was kind of a judgment, but that this is a real judgment. Why? Because this is going to be really bad for the Jews. See, because you know, Jerusalem, everybody is going to die. You see, everybody who is going to live in Jerusalem is going to die. So, this is going to make this prophecy about Jerusalem. First thing he says is this: See that no one leads you astray. Okay. First thing he said was." people are going to confuse you you are going to be misunderstood you are going to, people are going to tell you confusing things about what about the messiah about jesus people will come and say hey i am the messiah and another person will come and say no i am the messiah and they you know they will be like uh, they'll be uh, people will believe it and they'll be running and saying oh jesus is out there and somebody will say no no jesus is over here and people will be running towards this jesus everybody will be crazy after following another messiah but that won't be jesus see that won't be the real jesus so there'll be so many fake messiahs and these fake messiahs will confuse people and lead them astray astray means you know there's a straight way and there is a by road and there's a cut road and people will be taking the wrong road which means they will never reach the right destination they will reach the wrong place see they will deviate from the main road they will take the wrong road and they will reach the wrong end so people are there messiahs will come and say i am the messiah i am the messiah i am the messiah and people will be confused they will follow after the wrong messiah and they will end up in deep problem they will end up in hell you see so first thing that you have to do is don't be deceived pattike padara aarin chadike padara don't be tricked don't be fooled into following somebody who is not the messiah these are the days when you know people are all doing that there was this man you know i'll stop with this there was this man who claimed to be god you know he said i am jesus i have come again and i'm i'm going to take all of you back to heaven and everybody believed him he said what is the, how do I, how are you going to take us all to heaven and he said you know what when uh, you know there there was a comet coming towards uh, you know uh, the earth there was a comet coming towards the earth it comes once in 75 years the comet's name is halley's comet okay so when he said when halley's comet comes i'm going to bring a huge spaceship at the tail of the comet and on that spaceship i will take all of you to heaven he said he's a messiah he said he is jesus christ come again and he said i'm going to take all of you to heaven how in a spaceship on the tail of the halley's comet so be ready guys when halley's comet comes all of you should come with me on to that spaceship and everybody got ready 
They said, how will we reach there? How will we reach the spaceship? Will the spaceship land here? He said, no, 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 no. Spaceship won't land here. Each one of you has to kill yourself. When you open your eyes, you'll be there in the spaceship. And everybody believed this man's lies. He said, every one of you will be taken in that spaceship. If you believe in me, I will take you there and we will all go to heaven. And all these men, there were almost 67 people there. I think totally it was 80 people, but 67 people committed suicide on that one day, wanting to go on that spaceship. And this man tricked every one of them. He fooled every one of them, so, saying that he is the Christ. He is the Messiah. See, Now that was, that was long back. That was in 1970s. Okay. Now there are so many messiahs come after that. And People are still coming and saying, I'm Jesus, I'm Messiah, I'm come again. And a lot of people become so foolish. They go after these leaders. They go after these men. And they are all going to end up in hell. They're going to end up in soup, big soup. See? So that is the problem. A lot of messiahs, a lot of people will come and claim to be the messiahs. They are the real messiahs. So people who follow them will also be destroyed just like them. See, So... This is one of the things that are going to happen during the last days. Okay, let me tell you what are the last days and we'll stop there. See, when Jesus went up to heaven, that is called what we call the ascension. Okay, when Jesus in body form, he was taken up to heaven. As the disciples were looking from the ground, he slowly went up to heaven. Okay, so clouds covered him and they could not see him anymore. This was called the ascension. From the ascension, Jesus said he is going to come again. Right? So he's going to come again. That's going to be his second coming. First time he came as a baby. Next time he's going to come as king of kings and lord of lords. He's going to come in the cloud. Same way he went up, he's going to come again. But this time with angels, with trumpets, and all the people will see him. So that is his second coming. Now, the time between the ascension and the second coming, this is the time called this last days. The time between Jesus is going up to heaven and is coming again, this time gap is called the last days. So we would say, ah, but these are the last days. Yes, from the time Jesus went up to heaven till now, the last days are going on. Okay. So all that he predicted here is going to happen during the last days. Before his second coming, all these things are going to happen. And what does Jesus compare it to? It is a painful time. It's a time of struggle. It's like how a lady is suffering pains of childbirth. Have you seen people suffering with childbirth pains? Okay, which means uh, birth pains means you know when before the, when they have a full stomach, the baby is there, all grown up. It's about to come out. You know, about the baby is about to be born. At that time, the mother suffers a lot of pain. She can't sit. She can't stand. She can't eat properly because the pain is there. And when the baby is about to come out. We take the lady to the hospital and they have to, you know, tell them, come on, hold on, the baby is going to come. And she'll be like, yo, paining, paining, paining. You know, it'll be in deep pain. And he said, the pain keeps on increasing towards the time when the baby is going to be born. And Jesus says the same way there is going to be suffering, there's going to be wars, there's going to be famine, there's going to be earthquakes. All these things will be there. And these will be like birth pains. Which means the real thing is going to come. This is only the starting point. It's only the birth pain now. Really big pain and suffering is going to come towards the end. So it's like preparation for a greater pain is coming. See, So all these things, wars, yes. Earthquakes, yes. Famines, yes. All kinds of problems are going to come before the coming of the Lord. And when that is happening, think about it. It's not yet the end. Why? It's only the starting of the birth pains and the greater suffering is going to come after that the real struggle is going to happen after that so jesus predicted that much we'll only have time for this and we have to close there okay so next week please read the next the whole chapter is about his prophecy about what's going to happen before his second coming so you please read it and come so that we can quickly finish that right so today we have just finished um, right up to verse 8 of mark chapter 13 we'll pray and we'll close. So Jesus predicted these things. And if he said about the Jerusalem temple and it came true just like that, literally it came true, everything that he said about the future is also going to come true. We're going to see it sooner or later. You and I are going to see this happen right in front of our eyes, maybe. So at that time, 
you will remember the words of jesus and say yes lord you have already warned us and we should be prepared for that let's pray heavenly father we thank you a lot because you know the future you are the person who is in control of everything every event that is going to happen in the future and you have prophesied 2000 years back you looked ahead and you prophesied about these things that are going to happen and all that you said about jerusalem came true literally it came true everything came true spot on and we believe that everything that you prophesied about the future for us also it will come true before your coming again we are seeing wars around us we are seeing famines around us and we are also hearing about earthquakes all around us help us to understand that all these things jesus have already prophesied and it is still not the end it is going to be the beginning of the end birth pains have started but the real suffering is going to come in the future before your coming there will be great suffering help us to be prepared for help us to take your warning and to be prepared for that oh lord father thank you for all the way that you love us and you guide us help us oh lord to be like the apostles to be like the disciples who believed in what you said and prepared themselves in jesus precious name we pray amen